When I started this channel, putting anamorphic and on a budget in the same sentence was a paradox. I had an impossible concept as a goal and I just kept going at it. But now we have anamorphic lenses that cost about the same as a decent autofocus lens, with plenty of options around a thousand bucks. We never had anything true anamorphic, as some would say. The traditional two times, outside the realm of adapters. Now we do. Let's take a look at Blazor's latest set, the Kato, and figure out what's good and what's a compromise. Teased around NAB this year, the Kato lenses are two times full frame, small, lightweight, cinnamon style anamorphics. They are Blazar's follow up to the success of the Rima set that I talked about just a few weeks ago. Let's start with the technical part. Kato is a four lens set with 40, 55, 85, and 125 mil focal lengths. They cover full frame, and we'll get to what that means in a little bit, and come in cinema standard PL mount, which means they fit almost every camera out there. Right now we're looking at the 55, 85, and 125, while the 40 millimeters needs a bit more massaging before getting out in the market. The slip-on metal caps and transparent backs are a nice touch, but no one ever decided to buy a lens because of that. The construction of the lenses themselves feels solid and nice, with good dampening on the rings and good readability on all the information. The Kato's have matching geared focus and iris rings for motors, and like the Remus set, the iris ring is a bit too close to the lens mount, making the motor a little harder to rig, but not too hard to deal with. Focus comes down to almost 0.78 meters or 2 foot 6 inches on all lenses. I say almost because they're all ever so slightly different, but when accounting for the size difference, it makes me think this is a variable diopter design. I further support this idea with the fact that the squeeze factor doesn't change as we rack focus, remaining constant at two times. Still on the topic of focus, we have marks in Imperial and Metric, with a focus throw of 210 degrees, giving your first AC good control over the focus distance. The front has 82mm filter threads and 85mm outer diameter for clip-on mag boxes. Each lens weighs about 900 grams or 2 pounds, and although I find that light, you still have the option of using the quarter inch lens support at the front. I'm just going to remove mine. On the non-standard aspects, although they are all small, the lenses are not the same size, with their lengths increasing as the focal length goes up. And they don't have the same maximum aperture either. The 55mm is T2, the 85mm is T2.8, and the 125 is T4. More on the topic of maximum aperture in a little bit. The lenses are available for pre-order now, with shipping expected around November, and the full set sells for $4,600. And I'm estimating each lens separately will cost between $1,200 and $1,250. The set comes in a nice mossy green case, which dials down how much attention it attracts on set, and that's good. The set that I got came with tons of shims to adjust the perfect distance between the lens mount and the sensor, and this is a critical aspect of having perfect focus. I have calibrated my mount to accurate PL standard at 52mm, and all three lenses delivered excellent results without the need to re-shim them. The 55 feels a bit washed out when wide open at T2, with highlights leaking into the shadows, but that gets a lot better as we stop it down to T2.8. The 85mm is good from the get-go without the need to stop down to clean up the image. But you do expand your depth of field, and I usually make a case for filming at T4. The 125 is a bit bloomy wide open, even at T4, but cleans up nicely as we stop it. 
On the topic of distortion, these are all barrel distorting and the 55mm has a lot of it. And if you pan it, it does feel like we're inside of a fishbowl. This distortion combined with a decent minimum focus lets you get pretty warped close-ups. The results are a lot cleaner on the 85mm with slightly bowing outwards and the 125mm is such a long focal length that we can't really see much warping. The lenses cover full frame height and you can push to open gate, but the edges, especially on the sides, start to creep in on the 55mm, making me wonder how that will look on the 40mm. Still on the topic of coverage, I wanted to share some thoughts on the horizontal field of view equivalence of these lenses, because that will be greatly affected by your recording aspect ratio or your delivery aspect ratio. If you film using the open gate 3x2 full frame sensor, that gives you the unusual 3 to 1 aspect ratio, and most people aren't really into it. I didn't even use it on this review. But if you want something more standard, you will either go with a 4x3 or 1.2 to 1 crop of the sensor, while keeping the full height. This will result in an aspect ratio of 2.66 to 1 or 2.4 to 1 respectively, and you will get better results besides the more traditional aspect ratios. The improved results mean losing the over distorted edges and potential vignette from matte boxes and filters on the wider focal lights. In a 4x3 setting and 2.66 to 1 final aspect ratio, the equivalences are 55mm matches 37mm horizontally, 85mm becomes 57mm, and 125 comes out to 83. For 1.2 to 1 and a more traditional 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio, the 55mm equals 41mm, the 85mm gives you 63mm, and the 125mm delivers a 93mm horizontal field of view. While these numbers might not seem very impressive, you do get the full-blown 2 times anamorphic look. Bokeh is determined by the lens's current aperture, squeeze factor, and distance to subject. Two times affordable OVO bokeh has been the last holdout for anamorphic adapters, and the Kato's come in to give a good shape to that notion. I found that they generally produce nice looking ovals, although we get a bit of color fringing and a bit of a beam shape when approaching minimum focus or towards the edges of the frame, especially on the 55mm. One way to get better results on that is to use diopters. If you have little clue of what that is, the Cookbook Module 7 Episode 3 covers diopters better than I ever did before, so check that out. I can also see folks making a fuss about the T4 maximum aperture on the 125mm. At full frame and 2 times squeeze, T4 is a fine aperture honestly. And even T5.6 won't stop you from getting good background separation. Plus, the 16 aperture blades on each lens make those ovals look really smooth at any aperture value. When it comes to flaring, the Kato's only do silver, and silver the type that remains mostly white instead of picking up the color of the light source. Blazar has no plans to expand the array of flare colors such as cool or warm flares. We still get those green secondary flares that we saw in the Rebus, although they're a lot less pronounced here. Due to the variable diopter design, all Kato's show a fair amount of focus breathing. Is it distracting? Sometimes but not the worst thing we've ever seen on a production lens. I didn't have enough time to test the lenses as thoroughly as I would have wanted, but I will continue to use them over the next while and you will see those results here in the channel. One thing I liked in the field was their size and weight. It was easy to carry all three lenses plus the camera and ND filters in a backpack for hours without having it become too heavy. I was overly confident in my ability to pull focus from the camera screen in bright sunlight at fast apertures, so a lot of my test shots came out slightly out of focus, which I actually think is a good thing. We have lots of separation between what's in focus and what's not. This much separation plus the strong two times anamorphic look makes for great results, even though I didn't get them. On the not so great side, I felt all three lenses wash down easily in very bright scenarios. If the sun hits at an angle from above, you get a lot of veiling glare. And the veiling glare reduced contrast and added a purple slash blue sheen to the colors, which was not amazing. No lens is perfect, and because of all my time using adapters and Soviet lenses, 
Veiling glare is something that I wish I never had to experience again, ever in the future. Distortion on the 55 mil is pretty hardcore, as I said, and I think I'd settle on using that one for establishing shots and locked off camera positions rather than pans or tilts. The effect ends up drawing more attention to itself than to whatever image I was trying to capture. How do you feel about all the reviews coming out? And are these going to replace the Remus on your wish list or your current Remus set? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for hanging out, and I'll see you on the next one. Chit the